let's start with LeBron, though, my friends. Richard, your expectations for him tonight? Well, my expectations are for him to play a game of chess. Like we, we we've seen That's it these last checkers. couple. We've seen it these last couple of series. Even, um, you know, not shooting in a first quarter, and then hearing Draymond talk about Steph trying to figure it out. You know, LeBron is a, is a master motivator, and I think that last series, like the way he kind of um, manipulated the series, the way he made sure that Anthony Davis and other guys got going, and then he built himself up in that game six, then coming out aggressive. So I I, I think for me, watching him and watching him try and process. That's always been the thing that after playing with him, I've always enjoyed watching him each series figure it out. Even in that run in 2020, watching against Houston, watching what he did against Denver, watching what he did against Miami, watching him figure it out is one of the most beautiful things if you enjoy basketball. And I'm looking forward to seeing that. Well, I talked to NBA head coach yesterday and he's like, what do you have to do to stop LeBron? He said he expects the Nuggets to rotate different guys against him. Obviously, Aaron Gordon, Uncle Jeff, but he also said Brown. Hmm. He said, I would use Brown as an irritant, like a Pat Beverly irritant, somebody to take some time getting into his body and just also keep somebody fresh on LeBron. So he expects every six, seven minutes, somebody different, somebody different, somebody different. I mean, it's LeBron James, but hey, against him, he felt like the more health, uh, rested bodies, the better they could do against him. LeBron's going to see a lot of guys. Everybody you just said, including yeah. two guys whose last names are Brown, are going to yeah, guard yeah. him at some point in the series. Partly because I think we might see a little Aaron Gordon on Anthony Davis and just to see how that matchup works. But look, LeBron, in the first two rounds, very carefully parceled out that old school LeBron bully ball game. Yep. That where's Steph Curry? Where's the little guard? Bring him up to me. Let's get a switch. Let's bully ball it. He did it when they were far behind, and it was kind of like enough of this. We got to score. Or in games that he kind of deemed must win. Game six at home against the Warriors. This is a step up in competition for the Lakers. Yeah. I don't think the Nuggets afford that level of choosiness. I think for the Lakers to beat this team four times in seven games – He's going to have to bring that. He can't bring it every possession like he used to. But I don't think there's going to be able to be one game or two games where he just says, you know what, it's it's not tonight with me for that. We're going to have to right. find other ways. I think they need more of that. Well, because there's a reason that the Denver Nuggets have been the number one seed in the Western Conference literally since December. And this matchup, it very well may come down to Anthony Davis and Nikola Jokic. We're talking about the battle of the big men here. So let's bring in our very own resident big man, Kendrick Perkins. Is he still watching his own highlights? That's what I was going to check in. You watch your own no, highlights? No, 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 I know he said that. I know he said that. I know he said that. I got big Perkins. It was quick. sheet up here. Y'all could talk about Braun, but we want to talk about the matchup with AD and Jokic. But before I start, Darvin Ham has something to say. Man, try to catch him coming out of his house and kidnap him, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Noah. Um, I mean, it's just obviously everyone on, everyone knows how great he is. And, uh, you know, just going we'll to have to mix up, mix up pitches. And, you know, AD will start on him, but we have... We have few different guys that'll see action against him and just try to put the best foot forward every time out, but they can't try to do everything we can to do our work early and keep them off balance. Now, now listen, we know that Darvin Ham probably was telling a joke, but truth lies behind in jokes because you know why? Jokic have been giving AD their work this year. He is shooting 63% when contested by AD this season. Highs by any player versus Anthony Davis, minimum 15 field goal attempts. Okay, let's roll the tape. We know that Jokic is a problem. Look at him, getting to his spot, facing up, creating a little space. Seven foot, 284 pounds. AD, we know he's seven foot, but he's pretty light in the behind. Little up and under with the nice left hand hook. We come down again. Jokic setting a little brush screen, not too much, but just to get to his spot. Free! I forgot to say it. Here we go right here. Catching it at his sweet spot is Mano Imano. What'd he do? He takes his 10 dribbles, tomato chest, turns over a little scoop that only he could do. A scoop layup on Anthony Davis. Now, here it is. Against what AD for has been him the best defender and the elite defender, 29% allowed when he's contesting shots this postseason, which is the best in the NBA, and this is why I say he's been the best in the league. Now, watch this. Freeze! Jokic is going to have to guard. How do you make him work? 
put him in pick and rolls. Make him slide those puppies. Look at AD. Does a great job of catching, going straight down the lane to the basket. Here we go again. Box out, freeze. Anthony Davis, he sees it. He grabs the board. This is an underrated part about his game. Watch as he pushes the pace. He's in attack mode. Little Euro step, floater. This is going to be a fun matchup. And I know we keep talking about how they're going to stop Jokic, but Jokic needs to figure out how he's going to stop Anthony Davis. Let's take a step back, Zach. What are you looking for as the key in this game? First, how often do they actually guard each other? Sure. It's going to be a lot, but how much does each team try to play with the matchups? Because I'll tell you one thing each team can't afford. Foul trouble to either of those guys. And Anthony Davis... Look, Jokic is going to score. Jokic yeah. is unstoppable. He's going to get points. Anthony Davis can make something stuff for him. He's going to get points. He's going to draw double. He's going to get offense. He's more of a self-creator, one-on-one, on the block than AD is. AD gets a lot of his points pick and roll, occasional post-ups, kind of finding points. They're going to need him to find 25 to 35 almost every game in this series to have a chance. And we saw that there were just a couple of 12-point, 14-point games. That's my question is, can he work his way to high scoring nights every single game in this series? Because I think, again, the Nuggets demand that kind of consistency from the Lakers. Look, my thing is this. In 2020, I, I believe Anthony Davis, I, I know Giannis won the MVP, but Jokic and Embiid, they were all kind of clumped together. Anthony Davis thought he should have been, you know, uh, up for defensive player of the year, but they were all kind of clumped together. Anthony Davis has slowly gotten back this postseason and in this final stretch to being the Anthony Davis that we saw. A lot of injuries. The difference is this. Jokic over this two years has ascended far more. He has not he's not trying to get back to where he, he is. A two -time no, he MVP wasn't a two time then. MVP. Yeah. So to go from being an all star all NBA guy to an MVP, that jump, I don't think people fully understand the level of that jump. So for Anthony Davis to have one good game, one bad game, one good game one back game. That's not Jokic. Jokic is one of the most consistent, dominant players in this league. So while Anthony Davis has gotten closer to his 2020 year and what he can do, he's got a long way to go before I can start saying that, oh, this is going to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Anthony Davis did not guard Jokic in that 2020 as much. It was a lot of JaVale McGee. It was a lot of Dwight Howard. The Lakers do not have Jokic that. Jokic didn't guard him either. Jokic didn't guard him either. Agreed. But I'm still looking at Jokic can not score and just be the hub of that offense and they can still cause problems or he can just go one-on-one. -on -one. With Anthony Davis, we're seeing one good game, one bad game. One, I won't say bad game, so-so game for his standards. So I just think that is going to be the qu biggest question without a doubt. I think the thing is Anthony Davis, whoever has the ball, you have to attack Joker. That's the, another thing that the head coach said. He was surprised that Phoenix didn't attack Joker. He never was really in foul trouble against Phoenix, mm. but he was against Minnesota, and he fouled out in game five. He's a very questionable defender, and I think when you see somebody 6'11 and 285, and you're coming to him, you worry about him as a shot blocker. The Lakers can't. He's mm -hmm. not trying to block shots. He might try to get some steals or get in the passing lanes, but they have to challenge him to get him in foul trouble like Minnesota was getting him in foul trouble. You want to stop him from scoring? Yep. Get, Get him, him on the bench trouble. in foul trouble. And I think, you know, that is something that Anthony Davis and the Lakers are going to concentrate on is attacking Joker. They have no shot blocker. Yeah. Denver has no shot blocker. DeAndre Jordan. He hasn't, he hasn't played since 86. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.